In this session, we're, we're going to start off with Phoebe talking about events and then move on to some of the Wikimedia fundraising, how that, how that works from the uh, organization's side of things. So go right ahead. Okay. All right, you guys. So um, hi, thanks for coming. I had originally conceived of this session as a discussion, like a round table discussion, like we would all go in a room and sit around and brainstorm some great ideas about Wikimania, which um, we do every year, I try to do every year, um, and we've come up with ideas in the past, like a Wikimania committee, which has not yet come to fruition. Um, and. Uh, you know, other share ways to share best practices about Wikimania. Um, I thought this year that I wanted to do the same thing, but maybe broaden it out a bit and talk about events globally, um, not just this conference. Um, it's a little unfortunate that they put it in the giant auditorium, so I feel like I'm giving a lecture, which is not my intention. Um, and so my intention is to actually go through very briefly give us a little grounding in events. We've been talking about events all weekend here, actually. So there's this great session just before me about Wikimedia 10, or Wikipedia 10 and Wikimedia Loves Monuments. There's sessions um, yesterday about events when Lodovic talked about the chapters, activities. Many of those things are events. So we've all been talking about this this week. Um, but this is one of my favorite topics, personally, because there's so much going on around events in the Wikimedia universe, and there's so much we could do. Um, it's really exciting. It's really exciting to me every year when Wikimedia happens and we all come here. Um, it's probably the best week of my year. So this is one of my favorite topics. We will then go into a discussion of fundraising, which is rapidly becoming one of my most favorite topics. And. Um, if Philippe and Megan are going to talk about the fundraiser from the foundation side and give some of their perspective on the fundraiser. We all know there are lots of questions about fundraising um, and we're going to stick around and try to answer those um, or talk about it um, after their presentation. Um, but there hasn't been a formal Q&A planned, but we'll, we're leaving time to talk about all aspects of fundraising. So that said, um, we're an online project, right? But for an online project, we do a lot out in the world. And so these are the questions I want you guys to think about and that I'm going to ask you about. Um, what in events is most effective? What's least effective? What is our goal in doing all these things? Um, what support do we need internally and externally? Like what structures can we build? Committees, mass structures, sharing best practices. Um, and what models should we look for? So we are an online project that has run a conference for seven years now, internationally, right? Wikimania has been going since 2005. Um, Frankfurt, Taipei, Boston, Alexandria, Buenos Aires, Donsk, and now here. We also run regional conferences. To, and please, 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 this isn't a comprehensive list of things on my slides, um, because I did this in a hurry. Um, but also, so if you know other things that aren't here, tell me. Um, but also, don't be offended if I left yours out accidentally. But as far as I know, these are the two biggest cross-country regional conferences that have happened in Chinese and, uh, and Spanish, the Ibero Co-op. But there's been lots and lots of national and local conferences too, right? Um, in the US, in lots of countries, in Serbia and Poland, um, and there's been many, many more. And all of the chapters tend to have regional get-togethers or local get-togethers as well, and their AGMs. Um, there's been lots of standalone hackathons. Um, there's the Media Wiki Developers Meeting that happens every year in Berlin. Um, there's the Hacking Days here at Wikimania. And there's been a hackathon in DC, and uh, maybe there's more planned, I'm not sure. And then these, these are some of my favorite, right? These multi-events, right? That we were talking about in the session just before this. So Wikipedia loves whatever. Wikipedia loves art, monuments. Um, Wikipedia takes something, takes the city. Um, there have been lots of these, lots and lots, and the Wikipedia 10 celebrations were the biggest. 
as far as I know, this is the only one of those to happen within a single country. Pharos organized it. He had to leave, I think. Um, oh, he's right there. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Ferris has organized quite a few of these multi-events, actually. He's the driving force behind them. Um, I think this is the only one, though. We had a picnic in many cities across the US. There's been wiki academies, right, for academics in lots of places. There's been also workshops for Wikimedians in lots of places. My favorite is this like photo wiki 2010 that happened in Poland where um, they brought in professional photographers to teach us how to take better pictures. Um, these have happened over many, many years. There's lots of special purpose business means that we sort of run internally in the organization, the research conference, the chapters conference. These tend to be closed. These tend to be um, either invitation only or only of interest to a small number of people. There's been several of these that the foundation and chapters have run. Oh, oh, and we go to things, right? We show up at events. So um, there's all these trade fairs and things that we've had booths at, library conferences, book fairs. Um, there was a library conference here in Israel where they had this great booth. We tend to have booths and exhibitions. Oh, and there's field trips, right? Like a lift me limb here in, here in Israel and lots of photography trips. And these overlap, right? This is what Wiki takes the city is. Wikipedia takes the city are photography trips. But also, I would throw in there the oral citations project that Shal just started um, this year. Trips out to acquire information. There's award ceremonies. I know about the Zedler Medal. I think there's more. I'm very sorry. I, but I think there's more. But there's some special award ceremonies that we've hosted. There's synergistic events that we tend to show up at. Lots of people tend to show up at things like Wikisim, which is an academic conference about wikis, or Global Melt, which is Mozilla's um, events thing, or Drumbeat, which is also Mozilla's thing, or the tech conferences like OSCON and Open Source Bridge. Um, Lots of us give talks. Lots of us show up at conferences and give talks to an outside audience about Wikimedia. You know, I give talks to lots of library conferences, right? Um, where I go and I talk to my peers in the profession about something about Wikipedia. Um, many of us do this at various educational conferences and tech conferences and professional conferences. Um, what else? And then there's meetups, right? Where it sort of all began. So Wikipedians getting together in lots of cities. I was going, <laughs> I was going to count how many meetups there have been, and I couldn't do it because it's kind of hard because they're not all documented, um, and there's overlap and there's duplication. You might know, Richard. Do you know? Do you have a guess? <laughs> So there's hundreds of cities. My guess is there's been thousands of meetups over the years. Um, if you take all the cities and all the, all the, all the longest reign meetups, the longest reign is London, I believe. Yes, James. Thanks to James. Um, you guys have had what? Like, how many in a row? How many? 50 in a row. Um, the earliest I have ever found documentation of was in Munich in 2003. So we're an online project, right? <laughs> we're an online project that's out in the world in person a lot, hundreds of times a year um, at various things, various conferences, various events, things we do for ourselves and things we do for outsiders and um, things we do for all sorts of reasons. These get funded by the chapters, by the foundation to some extent, um, by people just paying out of pocket, organizing their own stuff. And we do it for all these reasons, right? We like to socialize, we like to hang out. That's why meetups have occurred. Um, we also like to get work done. That's why business meetings and hackathons have occurred. We like to do outreach. I don't know if things are missing from this list. Can you think of things they are missing? Sort of, you know, what's that? Stroop waffles, major reason. Stroop waffles are not on the list. Yes, thank you. Um, Perhaps we should have the Stroop Waffle Conference. Can we, can we like have a Stroop Con, perhaps? <laughs> a Waffle Con? What would that be? Um, uh, and we do a lot of outreach, right? And there's this idea that maybe we can do recruiting of new participants through, through events as well. Um, and so there's not very many structures for this, though, right? 
there's a, there's a grants advisory committee that reviews grant proposals. Many events are being funded by grants now. There's a Wikimania jury specifically for Wikimania. Um, many of you know how Wikimania is run. You might not all know. I don't know. Um, probably not, right? But briefly, cities bid. Their bids are reviewed by a jury, and then one city is chosen. Um, this is kind of it, right? The foundation, I don't know. Not really, right? Um, we're leaving it up to the local communities, by and large. Um, and so, other than organization on Meta, things like Richard's work and like trying to make lists of events and lists of meetups, um, and coordinating multi-events like Wikimedia or Wikipedia Loves Monuments or Wikipedia Ten, um, there hasn't been a lot of coordinating effort for best practices and to try and answer these questions, right? Um, so here are my questions to you, right? What is most effective in events? What do we need? What do we need as a movement? What do we want? What can we do for each other? How can we help each other? Um, what should our future be? Should we you know, go towards different models? Uh, lots of people have asked over the years why Wikimania in its seventh year is still more or less the same size that it was a few years ago. So it's always been more or less 400 to 600 people. Um, should that be the case, or should we start having 10,000 person conferences, right? Conventions, um, like many trade shows are. And you know, to talk about Wikimania specifically and to, to um, focus these questions on Wikimania, where do we want it to go? What structures do we need? Last year I started, um, after <laughs> much complaining and much delay, a Wikimania handbook um, that's on meta, that's maybe half done, that everyone should work on who's interested, um, that tries to outline some of this information about how we've put on the conference. Um, this conference is a major, major, major production, right? It takes a team of volunteers a year, pretty much, um, to organize all the speakers and the rooms and the logistics and everything. Um, and there are best practices, but, but they're often not recorded. What are some lessons from past years? What do you think about this Wikimania? What should we do going forward? And I don't know what other questions we want to address. So like I said, I planned this as the discussion session, and this is a little awkward because um, you're all there. So does anyone have thoughts on any of this stuff? So Richard, you had a question. Oh, I know. I uh, of course, of course I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I had, um, I, I was also observed the relatively stable size of Wikimania. Right. Um, and it's occurred to me several times in like, you know, a fantasy of, <laughs> of a giant Wikimania or at least a, um, a giant event around Wikimania. Um, this was part of our failed yeah. 2011 bid, right, the Wiki right. World's Fair. Right. Um, and I think it would be nice if we found at least a way to um, engage people who maybe aren't the hardcore people right. um, in sort of a larger cultural event. Right. You know, something like Woodstock eventually. But. <laughs> the Woodstock of Wikimedia. Yes. How do we feel about this? Would you guys attend? Yeah? 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 yeah. yeah. Would you attend the Woodstock of Wikimania? Okay. <laughs> okay, not so many people. <laughs> You would all come. Okay, Guillaume. Yeah, I, I mean, um, you know, it's kind of the, the opposite idea, actually. That, <laughs> <laughs> that I, I mean, you know, every time when, um, when the Wikimedia City uh, and Bid are chosen, um, there are some discussions about, okay, so should we try to have, like, not one big conference once a year, but, you know, the, um, a moderate size Wikimania and then having like uh, regional uh, conferences like one in America and one in Asia, etc. Because it would allow more people to, to attend something that is closer to, to where they live, etc. So I, I don't know if that's an idea that's uh, globally accepted or globally controversial, but I, I think it's uh, worth considering. So James is taking notes, right? Right, James? All right, James is taking notes on Etherpad, which I'll pull up I met. So regional conferences. Let me ask before I get to you two, um, how many people here are familiar with the Wikimania process, like the bidding process? How many people know what I'm talking about? Almost all of you. 
Okay. All right. I was going to go over it, but I won't. In the back. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Go over the process? The, okay. Go over it? Okay. Well, go ahead. This can be very short. Like I said, there are cities that bid. Um, and by cities, I mean local Wikimedia groups who have a city in mind, who bid for their city. And the bids are long, right? The bids include all this information about not only the city, but the organizational team and what you want to do with your Wikimania and all the logistics. Um, and then there's a community jury that goes through these, and it's sort of this long and intense process, and we want evidence that you can do this in your free time in a year. Um, and we pick a city. So it's not the best process, but it's the process that's evolved over, over time, yeah. Okay, um, my, my question is this. I think the nature of the wiki community, so to speak, is very much the opposite of what takes place in, Wiki, in Wikimedia and the fact that it's many times people read at leisure, refine, cooperate, and so on. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to be somewhere in person to see what a wiki leader or innovator actually does. You can also see that through different chat forums or look at what they do. And even if it's like, you know, the Gardner Vision 2012, you can read the keynote. So it's very interesting that um, for people who very much take their time to refine and do something well, we come here where we have maybe a slight lead on what the schedule is going to be and come to a bunch of sessions and like you said, you know, maybe not as much maximizing. So I think a suggestion would be is to think of what is uniquely possible to be done in person, which can't be done in depth better online and sort of work to maximize and focus specifically on that because for this community, everything else can probably be done better over at home over a longer period of time. That's a great idea. I mean, that's a great way to frame the problem, I think, and to think about it. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that seems true, right? That seems true that we do everything online and can do everything better online, um, except for this thing where we literally have hundreds of events a year now. Um, and why is that, right? I think part of it is because we like to hang out with each other, right? We like to spend time. I don't know if there's other reasons. Are there, is there more than one mic, do you know? Uh, Maybe not. You can come up, Philippe. Come up. So, um, so there's a question here, and then you've... I just wanted to sort of advocate for a halfway between Guillaume's model and Pharos's dream. Um, a couple of, uh, of organizations that I'm involved in have taken to realizing that organizing an event like this is so big that it sometimes can't be done in a year. And they've started to do um, every other year conferences. But in the off years, they are doing regional conferences. So I think there is a halfway point between the, the Guillaume model and the Pharaoh's dream. <laughs> so I'll just jump in whilst Phoebe's busy trying to find my etherpad. Um, so I would agree on everyone who's just come before, which is always easy. So on the what is unique about an in-person meeting, um, I think it was captured really, really well by Brandon yesterday when he talked about empathy. You know, one of, one of the things that makes Wikimania great is not the actual event itself, but the fact that you go back and you edit alongside people you've actually sat with, you've actually discussed with, you've actually, you know, had a beer with or whatever. And what we need to do is find ways of focusing us on the things that are great, which is hanging out with other people, not necessarily having these big structured talks or Phoebe standing at the front of a huge conference hall trying to have a workshop with us. It was connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear it was connected. So, um, and, but on, on the point that Philippe made, sure, we could do that, but it doesn't have to be every other year. We could have a winter regional conference and a summer annual global conference. I mean, there's no reason that we have to work on the timing. We can work on what we actually want to achieve and then work about timing later. Is there benefit to all being together as an international community? Like... I mean, Wikimania is great. It's hard to put on, and it's always um, considerably smaller than our actual community, right? So there's 600 of us here out of 10,000 active contributors and all the readers and all the academics. I mean, so I think your question is totally apropos. What can we get done here? So last year, last year there was this idea of forming a Wikimania committee, the endless dream of forming a Wikimania committee um, that would sort of provide structure from year to year, right? 
continuity from year to year. That has not been done. But I'm wondering what people would like to see for events globally. I've heard lots of suggestions for events in a box. Like if you had a box and you could put an event into it, it would be like templates for ideas of programs, right? And publicity material. Um, I was talking about this with a few people, with a few people um, earlier. What do you guys think about that idea? Yeah. I think that uh, some, that there should be a, like you said, a greater continuity. This is much better. Yes. Very well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So greater continuity, he said. So, so because we need to maximize our time, the website should be uh, extended to maximize social interaction afterwards. During the event. Oh, during the event, the website should be maximized. <clears throat> yeah, um, I just came in now, so I might be repeating stuff that was said, but uh, I totally agree that the social aspect of Wikimania is very important, and that's part of the reason we dragged this one into a six-day uh, affair. Um, I'm not too worried about there not being a Wikimania permanent committee as much as I do want to see a better process uh, or a better habit of one team uh, tutoring the next team. Uh, we had that last year in Gdansk with the local team and also some other gurus like Phoebe that were there. Uh, and I just did that with, the, with you guys, basically, <laughs> uh, there outside. Um, because this is where the memory is fr most fresh and, and recent, and you can do that. And, and I repeatedly said already on, on various mailing lists that I think Wikimania is becoming so big and so complicated that eventually it will happen just every once, once every two years. But that's, well, that's another thing. How many people here, this is your first Wikimania? Oh my goodness. All right, so 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 I feel like I feel like maybe we're 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 not talking to the audience. What would what would uh, <laughs> although I did want this to be a discussion. So what would make Wikimania better for you? I mean, what 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 did you hope to get out of Wikimania? Are you getting it? I guess for the first timers who are here. You're not a first timer, Andrew. Sorry. <laughs> or are you? Is this your first time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so those are those are the questions that we need to need to answer, right? Yeah. Um. I need, uh, I think this one's been extremely well organised. But my it only <laughs> my only criticism would be that at some of the sessions, it seems like the timing's been rather cramped, yeah. so that there's no space for discussion at the end. And when you've got, you know, say 100, 200 people in the room, a whole bunch of different perspectives, uh, and, you know, it's one of the reasons we're here. So right. that would be my only criticism of the actual timing. All right, let's gain applause. Applause from other people? Yeah, 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 okay. So, so we have this battle. Harrell, Harrell and I have had discussions about this, uh, as I have with Lodovic and, and some other people in this room. Um, there's this perpetual tension between wanting to put in the like hundreds of great proposals that you get from the community for Wikimania sessions, because you got hundreds. You guys have an acceptance rate of 30% this year? Yeah. They selected 100 out of 200. So there's 200 great proposals that come in, or maybe like 150 great proposals that come in. And, um, and at the same time, everyone who's here actually just wants to talk to other Wikipedians. Like, so there, there's always a tension in the schedule, and that's always been an issue for Wikimania. What about other people? First time, first time attendees? I, I wanted yeah. to make a quick response. Uh, something which came up earlier, uh, it would be really nice if uh, some of the presentations had a trailer made before because uh, <laughs> some were on a very great level and some were practically incomprehensible, wow, I, at least okay. for me. Okay, okay, so trailers, presentation trailers. How about other people? Um, just here. Yeah, in the shirt, just here. 
black shirt. And yes, no one is naked yes. in the black shirt. <laughs> I would like um, computers on the convention center because if people don't have laptops, then you have absolutely no access to Wikipedia at all. So I, I have that at the dorms, but it clo it's, it's not open at 8 and it closes at 8. So I have mm. absolutely no computer for a week. And that's um, for Wikipedians, I hope you can imagine that's not good for me. <laughs> and that is um, tragic. I get in a very spastic <laughs> mode. So. <laughs> I would so like this computers. is a good way to make friends. Public computers. <laughs> and borrow their computers. OK. Other comments? And then Ludovic, who is not a first-time attendee. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not the first time, I know. Uh, but I would like to ask also a question to the audience, basically. Um, what I've been battling also for, for several years now is that I want more discussions in Wikimania. Because you are right. Um, we're sitting here all listening to these uh, people on the stage. And most of the time, we just like to hang out and talk and discuss. And if I'm walking in the hallways, I hear lots of heated discussions about all kind of topics. What do you think? Should we have more lectures or more discussions like this? More lectures or discussions? OK, raise your hand for more lectures. <laughs> raise your hand for more discussions. All right, discussions like this are just discussion free time. Discussion, okay. James, okay, let's, no, 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 we'll have another vote. Free, okay. Yeah, right. that's true. There were two days of pre-conference. There were two days of pre-conference that were nothing but discussions, so I'm not criticizing this conference. How many people for more just plain free time, nothing scheduled at all? <laughs> I suppose that depends on whether we include beer or not. How many people for discussions like this, just sort of open sessions? OK, maybe a third of the room, half the room. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Why not have one entire thread being ones where the, the presentation, as this chap mentioned, is there in advance, and the idea is you read that, you see that before you go in, and the entire ah. minutes is to actually talk with the person who you've seen the video of the and have the debate. Okay, so the suggestion is for a Wikimania with homework. You read the <laughs> you read the presentation ahead of time, and then you come in and discuss it at the at the session. Okay, um, let's 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 have three more minutes. Sj. So if, uh, taking that a little bit further, because I love that idea. Uh, how how about the idea of plug having no ownership of presentation content? People can suggest a great presentation, and they can put all the all the information up. But to have to have it be a collaboration about how to present group work. A co yeah. All right. So so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah 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 yeah. I want to hear all about that. I'm a little confused. Uh, Guillaume. Sorry, there's lots of running in this session. Um, so um, I, I'd just like to, to propose a, uh, an alternate model. Uh, I know that some uh, open source conferences, like uh, for example the KD Academy, has like um, two or three days of um, Wikimania-like uh, presentations, and and you know where people uh, present their work, etc. And then they have like a, a, a whole week. Uh, of workshops and, and open discussions, mm -hmm. and that's really useful because since uh, everybody has seen the presentations, you know, mm -hmm. you know who to go talk to. And I was wondering if that would could be uh, yeah. considered for Wikimedia. Yeah, I mean, we did more of that this year than has ever been done before with the two days of pre-conferences, but it wasn't quite the same. Less talk, more workshop idea. I am also involved at a conference called Wikisim, which will be this fall in um, California, which is academic and technical about wikis, all, all kinds of wikis. And um, we have a track of open space the entire time. So meaning it's a track of free time to get together with groups and talk about whatever you want while the presentations are. But it's formal. There's a room. Um, so that's an idea as well. Are there more comments? I think there's room for maybe one, one or two yeah. more. OK, how about in? Right. 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 So technical meaning technically academic or technical meaning media wiki? Uh, or both. Okay. 
It's not the same thing, dude. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but a technical track the whole time. So, so again, that's one of the tensions of Wikimania. That's one of the schizophrenic tensions is we're sort of modeled after an academic conference and sort of not sort of this community event. OK. Um, are you, how are you doing there, Philippe? Ah, uh, yes, so, uh, yeah, more, bids. more bids, okay, okay, so um, I'm going to turn it over to fundraising, but um, there is a plug, I was asked to make a plug for the Wikimania bidding, so Wikimania bidding for 2013 has not opened yet, Wikimania 2012 will be in Washington DC in the US. We, for 2013, um, there's been a few ideas, but no formal bids yet, which means everyone still has time to bid. Um, and so here's the thing. Many of the places that may bid know this is happening, right, and are going to think about bidding. And I would like to encourage you to think about bidding and also to actually bid. But for everybody else who probably isn't up for bidding this year, um, because it's a lot of work and you have to be up for doing the conference and have a good local group, participate in the Wikimania bid process. So every Wikimania bid should have comments on the talk page from like people who would be attendees looking at that looking at that bid and saying, this seems like a good idea, this seems doesn't seem like a good idea. I would like to, you know, what about this? What about that aspect? Um, Every Wikimania bid should have this. I would love it if the Wikimania talk page could be filled up with suggestions like about, about Wikimania. Um, so that would be my request to you all. Okay. Okay, anything else? Any last minute? We're very short because we have a fabulous presentation about fundraising. And then like I said, then we'll go into a special ad hoc extended fundraising discussion um, before Jimmy's talk. Um, but thank you all very much. I hope we can, in fact, continue this online on the Wikimania pages and the Wikimania handbook. So, hey, thanks. Thank you very much. So we'll just move right into the next presentation then. Great. <laughs> so uh, this is the, about the donations model for the 2010-2011 fundraiser. And uh, we titled it, Get Jimmy Off My Screen. Um, and this is who we are. Um, I was, it was pointed out to me earlier that that's uh, after and that's before. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I got a lot of funny looks. That's just how it is. Uh, if you're here to discuss the board's recent resolution on chapter fundraising, we're doing that later. I think we've talked about that. We are not the droids you're looking for. Not us. <laughs> So fundraising, by the numbers. Um, just a little bit of quick background. In 2010, 2011, the Wikimedia Foundation's operating budget was 20.4 million. Um, we raised, uh, in 2009, we raised 8 million online. In 2010, that doubled to about 16 million. These are very rough numbers. Total online donors, um, these are people who gave under $10,000. In 2009, we had 220,000 of them. And in 2010, we had half a million. Um, only 400 of those gifts were over $1,000. So that gives you some idea for um, the general average size of the gift, which was about, what, what have we ended up? Uh, average was about $28, but the most common gift amount by far was $20. So, so most people giving $20. Yeah, so we love that. Mm -hmm. And an average day during the fundraiser, uh, we brought in about $320,000 from 10,000 donors. Um, Megan. Uh, right, so this is the timeline of our campaign. Uh, each of these bars is how many US dollars we raised each day. Um, and we really changed this from last year, or 2009 fundraiser. Um, we started out really strong and ended really strong. And the reason we knew that, we had to raise twice as much money. And to do that, we had to take full advantage of all of our fundraising days and especially uh, the attention that our fundraiser gets when we launch. Um, and how we did that was we had a lot of pre-campaign testing. So in the months leading up to the fundraiser, we tested once a week different messages so that by the time the fundraiser launched, we had uh, strong messaging to take advantage of that. So um, do you and want to then, talk about the peaks and valleys there? Yeah, okay. So kind of the timeline. Here, I'll be the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pre-campaign testing, lots of testing. We find out Jimmy's our strongest thing to launch with. Launch with Jimmy. 
Jimmy's running for a while. He's going down a little. We think he's going down. It's time to turn over to editors. We ran um, editor banners and editor appeals around this week. It's the middle-ish end of November. Starting to get a little bit of banner fatigue, we think. Yeah. So Jimmy goes down. Banners go down in general. Um, we come up. And it's here. important to say also, though, that we're experimenting with editors here. We've never done this before. Yeah, this was a first time thing, and it was really hard, and we weren't uh, as prepared as we are going to be this year, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, we bring in Sue. Right around here-ish, right here. Yeah, yeah that's Sue. Sue. <laughs> there you are, Sue. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> so Sue helped us. She, bring us. she brings us up a little bit. Bumped us back up. Uh, and then we bring back Jimmy. <laughs> But also, we sent an email that day, too. So, uh, so there's a couple factors. Jimmy came back, and we sent an email, which is why we got a big spike. Was that the recurring email? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. recurring giving, first yep. time ever. Yep. Um, we go through. This is the end of the year, the end of December. And kablam, end of the year happens again. We had uh, really intense testing days the last few days of the year. And this is the point where we were able to find a few messages uh, for the banner that performed better than the please read a personal appeal from uh, Wikipedia founder Jimmy Wales. And they were all around year end. It had kind of a timeline and the fundraiser's happening, only three days left. Um, and they were, sorry, I'm kind of jumping. But anyway, end of the year, big excitement. And this so, is kind of where we started. So we started. Please read a personal appeal from Wikipedia founder Jimmy Wells. Then we started to play with messages a little bit. These are old school banners. These are ones um, that we tried out before we found out about graphic banners working really well. So these are in the summer. We're doing yeah. this last summer. We're experimenting with messages. We're experimenting with uh, button placements and amounts. Thanks for the brain massage. Uh, she's a cool lady. We Thank used you. a couple of hers. Um, Canadian. And we did some, you know, we were just sort of playing around with what, what we could do with the text of banners to see if we could get anywhere near the please read a personal appeal from Wikipedia founder Jimmy Wales. At this point, we couldn't. That was always just stomping everything else. Um, that was the wrong button. There we go. Mm -hmm. Right, so knowing that is their strongest message, we wanted to optimize on the banner design. We tested a variety of, and this is just a handful. There are many, many more, but these are a few examples. We had different colors, different photos, um, the same text. So this text we hadn't been able to, fit, to beat. So the text did the same, just different graphical treatment of the same message. And uh, ultimately, we end up running this plain white banner. Um, so we don't need really uh, like fancy, flashy, uh, noticeable banners um, on our site. And the, a big thing here, you can't, you can't actually read it, but it says read now. <laughs> and uh, that button helped a lot. That button um, increased our, increased our click-through rate. And we, it wasn't just read now. We ended up doing please help and, and other buttons as well. But um, that call to action or invitation to do something, it's like if you see a button, you, you want to click that button in. And so people do. So the button's a big deal. And the other thing that we <laughs> found out about that button was when we discovered that people saw the banner up there, they didn't know to click it. They were having trouble figuring out what to do with it. So we gave them a little hint, you know, yeah. click it. Um, and also, we nicknamed some of these banners. Yeah. We uh, had um, Office Jimmy. We, call, yeah, Office, we called this one Amex. We thought it kind of. After Looks a like while, an American Express. An American ad. Express ad, maybe. Uh, I don't remember the green. I don't remember. We had better oh, names. that was Office Jimmy. These were the beginning. Yeah. We had better names by the end of the year. Yeah. <laughs> um, OK, so this is just an example of. Of, um, oh yeah, the biggest thing from, okay, so we have the plain text banners, adding the picture and the graphics helps a lot. And these are banner click-through rates throughout an entire day. And the ups and downs are normal, just hour by hour variations, how many people are on the site. Um, but the big thing here is all the banners at the top, each line's a different banner, those are all banners with a photo. <clears throat> these two banners at the top uh, have no photo, so. The ones at the bottom, you mean, yeah. Uh, right, yeah. sorry. Bottom, no photo, top photo. Uh, and so between all the graphical banners, there wasn't a big difference between you know, like red or green. There wasn't a huge difference. The big difference was the photo. It was 50% uh, you know, higher click-through rate. So, so we kept the photo. Uh, we are very aware that we created an internet meme. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of cool to go to knowyourmeme.com and see our stuff. <laughs> okay, so this is um, uh, this is sort of an overview of um, 
2009 versus 2010. Um, we know that in um, 2009, the blue is the amount raised by the foundation and the green is the chapters. 2009 to 2010, you can see it just almost doubled. Um, average donation sizes. Now, you, you see it went down a little bit. That's actually okay for us. We, we don't care that it went down slightly. It helps us. It, it makes it a little more accessible for people to give. Right, but the number of... Sorry. I think total, the yeah, to total number of givers. Right, so that's a good thing because more people are giving at a slightly lower level. So we had twice as many donations. And uh, so that's actually a good thing that the average size went down a few dollars. So there's, uh, there's the graphical visu visualization of 2008 to, to 2010. You can see we, uh, we've uh, brought in a few more donations. We're getting better. Yeah. <laughs> this nightmare is Megan's baby. James, remember this? Um, <laughs> okay, so this is our big reporting. It's uh, called big reporting, our document. Um, basically, this is just an example. This is one day, December 29th, of our testing. Each line is a different banner or landing page, depending on which test we were doing. And this was December 29th. This is just one day of the fundraiser. And uh, OK, so each two lines represent one test. And basically, by the end of the fundraiser, we had come up with a process that worked really well for us. We call them boiler rooms. And basically, we get together. And we put two things up to test. We look at the results. We run it for an hour, look at the results, see the winner, look at the winner, figure out what it is that's, that, that's better about it, come up with something, learn from that, come up with something to test for the next hour, and, and keep going. And it's important to say that when she says come up with something, what we're actually doing is rewriting. We're totally rewriting letters yeah, during so these like hours. Yeah, it's live testing. It's not like we had planned it uh, the day before and had everything lined up. It's as we're going, we're looking at what's working and, and using that for the next test. Um, and it's actually kind of exhausting. You can only do it for a few hours before, you know, for like one, you know, eight hours and then it's st stop doing it. But, um, but, but yeah, this is just an example. And it felt good, you know, by the end of the day, you make progress bit by bit and uh, yeah, felt good. <clears throat> Easy changes. This is you. Uh, okay. So some things that we did weren't actually too, too difficult to do. Adding the photo of Jimmy wasn't, uh, Im Im incredibly difficult, but it actually made a big difference, about 50% higher click-through rate with that. Adding the button, again, wasn't too hard, and uh, it made a big difference as well. The progress meter, it's, um, you know, wasn't the hardest thing to put on, but it helped a lot. Is Ryan Caldari here? Uh, Caldari, I don't know if you are, but thank you for, um, Caldari made that actually. We love you for your progress meter. <laughs> <It's>, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and other things we did are, uh, also make a big difference, but these are a lot harder, so, Trying to come up with something, uh, text that beat the personal appeal was really hard. Uh, these are two, two successful messages that we finally found in just the very last few days of the year. Uh, one of them says, if everyone reading this donated $5, our fundraiser would be over today. Please donate to keep Wikipedia free. And then only one day, I think we started this, only three days left to make a, do a tax deductible donation to keep Wikipedia free. Please help Wikipedia pay its bills in 2011. Um, so these are two out of several uh, that we tested, and finally, in the last couple of days of the campaign, we found something that beat that original personal appeal um, message, and that did make a big difference. You saw at the very beginning the lines on the last few days uh, as we got closer and really emphasized the end of the year. Uh, it made a big difference, but it was, it was, this wasn't easy to find. We had to test a lot, a lot of different messages to find these. Okay, so one of the other things we did was we optimized the form. This is the 2009 donation form. Um, and I'm about to flip to the 2010 form, but then we'll show you some of the differences between them. Obviously 2009, and then 2010. You'll notice it looks a little more cleaned up. Um, the reason why it looks cleaned up is we did some things. We took away the sidebar treatment. Um, we got a lot of flack for that, but we found out it actually helped a lot. People were confused by the banner, or by the links on the sidebar. And so by taking those away, we made it very clear what we expected you to do was to go here and give us money. <laughs> we took away, uh, always, we took away the graphic at the top. Um, our running suspicion for why that worked was, A, it could be distracting, but also it was pushing the, the giving form down on the page. And so people were just not scrolling down far enough to see what was happening. We also added this little box. Uh, this box where your donation goes was huge. 
Big that box. was massive. And um, it's about adding that box. Uh, you can't read it. It says where your donation goes. Um, basically, technology and people talks about our technical needs and the staff at the foundation. And then the other thing we did was we cleaned up this green box on the side, and we took away. I know we took away the comments. I know I hate it too. But by taking away the comments we were able to raise the number of people who actually completed the giving process. Um, we'd like to find a way to bring comments back. But um, so basically, we cleaned up the form, cleaned up the page quite a lot. That made a huge difference in giving. Yeah. And uh, that box was about, I think, almost 30% uh, increase in donations by adding that where your donation goes box. So uh, with that in mind, here. So, yeah, so next year we have uh, a few goals again. Yeah. We have our obvious goal, which is the dollar goal. Our bigger budget next year, $30 million. And the additional goal, which, um, which this is the year we get to do it. We get to end the dependence on Jimmy Banners and letters. Um, you know, wait, before we were, we were kind of stuck on him. We couldn't find messages that are better this year. We've already started our testing early once a week, and we found messages that um, actually beat Jimmy. So, so it's great. We get to highlight more people during the fundraiser this year, and, uh, and yeah, we're excited. Um, if I can figure out how to make this thing move to the next page. There we go. So how are we going to do that, Megan? Well, <laughs> um, you guys have seen this. We have a whole new expanded approach to creative. So that's what we've been doing this week. Uh, the storytellers came, and we're interviewing uh, you guys, we've been interviewing these last few days, and we, we have a new process, basically, to write these fundraising letters. They're really hard to write. Last year, we were sending emails saying, hey, write a letter, but it's really hard to do. So this year, we're taking, we're taking extra time. We're doing full interviews, finding out why people are here and their experience and why people should donate, and writing letters using those. So there's at least, I don't know like at least seven people in here who have uh, done interviews this week and before, and we started with the tech staff. Um, uh, before we came here, we, we practiced on some staff members and, and started testing. And, um, and so that's our new process, taking more time, working that out, and being able to, to highlight more people during the fundraiser. Um, execute 100% better. We want more testing um, with better content and greater precision. So last year, we used the US. Ah, OK. So last year, we used the US mainly as our testing ground. We would test there and then find the best message and put it in different countries. And this year, we want to test more messages um, specific to countries. So we'll need your help. <laughs> and add more channels, local payment options. We're trying to figure out how we can accept more currencies. Uh, just basically put more effort into our email asks and offsite opportunities to give. Um, we have a Google grant for um, AdWords, which we are just starting to get into. So, um, I tell you that I personally believe that you remember uh, these guys. Something like Wikipedia is uh, a remarkably significant phenomenon in, in our history. We're not just building an encyclopedia, even though that's the primary task. People who work on Wikipedia learn how to work together. Now we have evidence that it's possible to do something like this, and that there is such thing as uh, collective wisdom or collective good, uh, and that it works. You know, you're giving education to people, and not just any people, but the whole of the world. So I feel great by contributing to an encyclopedia that is accessible to virtually everyone in the whole world. Como una flor que necesita que de vez en cuando le pongamos agua y, y, uh, y la cuidemos, porque si no, simplemente se va a destruir y, uh, y hay que cuidarla. So one of the things that we didn't do last year, uh, yeah. One of the things that we didn't do last year is any video type appeals. We don't know if they work. It's one thing we wanted to try and we ran out of time. But yeah, that's uh, something fun. Yeah, it's, um, it's an option. I mean, we're thinking definitely that the written appeal, we know that it works. We want to put a lot of energy into that. But we're still open to experimenting with new ideas as well. Um, and the community, we need even more involvement than last year, please. And thank you. Um, so editor appeals, that's this week. If we find a magic formula, look for lots of them. I have great news. Yesterday, we ran uh, one of our weekly tests with, um, with Stephen Walling. And I'm sorry, getting I'm there. Slow. Sorry, I'm trying to add Stephen okay. Walling. I put him in there. It's OK. Anyway, that guy. Oh, he went away. <laughs> so well. 
Okay, anyway, so yesterday we ran this test. Um, so before we came here for Wikimania, we practiced the interview process on staff back at the office. And we've been looking, and we found a few staff appeals that are working well. We used Brandon, you've seen his banner, um, programmer Ryan Lane, we've done, we've done a few. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, and, but we wanted to practice with editors, so we interviewed Steven about his editing experience. And yesterday we ran a test um, with an appeal from him, and we tried the please read personal appeal from Wikipedia editor Stephen Walling. And it didn't do so great. We tried it like about a week ago. And then yesterday we tried a new banner with the same message, the same written letter, but the banner said, please read uh, a personal, or no, sorry. Please read um, an appeal from Wikipedia editor of 191 um, articles. And it had a higher click rate than Jimmy and performed about the same in terms of donations. So that's great news. It's really, really encouraging because everybody who we've been interviewing these last few days has great stories. There, it's been actually really, really fun doing these interviews. Um, thank you if you've taken. I know it took a bit of time, but, but thank you if you came. Um, and sorry. Uh, I'm almost done. Um, anyway, oh, but even if you didn't have time to interview this week, we're still doing interviews over Skype, over phone, and over the next few months, you can email wikistory at wikimedia.org if you think that you'd like to have an appeal run during the fundraiser. Um, we do need help with testing. So I said last year we did a lot more testing in the U.S. This year we need to test in different countries. Different messages will work different for different populations. So you guys come from all different countries. We need help figuring out the best way to appeal to, to donors in different countries. Um, as well as, so for messaging as well as for the form, the amount that we're asking for, we need to make sure that it's relevant um, in each country. And a blog. I, uh, we want to start up a fundraising blog this year. I've been posting test updates, but, uh, which we did last year as well, but this year we just want to have more frequent and kind of a richer discussion around um, our testing and the fundraiser in general. And um, I think that's... And There we go. Oh, yeah, okay, and also the contribution campaign. So in areas uh, or in regions where we're not raising money or we can't for some reason accept our currency or there's just no money to raise. We want to run a contribution campaign and put up banners asking people to edit rather and donate their knowledge rather than donate money. And um, and as editors, you guys can help us with this. And um, I know I'm kind of asking for help, but but I really do want people to get involved. And this is everybody. This is for for chapters, for payment processing chapters, non-payment processing processing chapters, uh, people from countries where there is no chapter. Uh, we need help from people all over. So so please help. <laughs> and so that's pretty much it. That was uh, that was what we did last year and what we're doing this year. Mm -hmm. And um, there are about a thousand ways for you to be involved, and we hope you will. And uh, give Megan a ton of support because she's got one of the hardest jobs around, I think. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. And should we just go on to the uh, variant, maybe? Or, or we can ask this. Uh, Anybody do you have questions? Okay, yeah. yeah. If you guys have questions on, uh, on any of our stuff. If we could get the lights back. Hey, uh, I found that it's really exciting that you're able, able to assemble so much money. Uh, but the question is, and I believe I arise today when I talked to Stu, uh, when we discuss our responsibility before uh, our donors, uh, when we will stop pretending that if they do not fail, the Wikipedia will instantly fall next year. I mean, we all know that's not true. But for some reason, every year we're making people believe, like at least I believe many, many people believe that's true. Okay. I mean, I don't think that we actually, in our message so much, uh, we tried as much as possible not to say Wikipedia is ever going to fall down tomorrow. Um, we explained our needs and we're trying to be as clear with donors as we can about our real practical needs and the use and um, to stay genuine to that as much as we can. Um, I would like to know if we can get uh, statistics for, for uh, which uh, web browser was used when uh, people clicked their banners. Um, the, the testing results? 
Yes. Yeah, so um, there's a 2010 fundraiser report up on Meta, and that has a summary, kind of a greater detail summary of the testing that we just went over, as well as the test reports, and you can see all the analytics and the actual numbers, um, and that's on Meta. Thanks. Sure. Uh, major donors. Major donors. Yeah, we do. Um, I mean, what we work on here is the online and the uh, year-end campaign, but we do have somebody at the office who, you know, who does one-on-one -on -one solicitation. Uh -huh. okay. um, two very quick ones. Uh, tax status outside of the U.S. Is there any plans to do things like gift aid in the UK and other things elsewhere where you can basically say the, you know, to, to basically make it tax deductible in other countries? Mm -hmm. And the other thing is about the content contribution is are there any plans to make it so that uh, to nudge people towards other projects other than Wikipedia? Because the vast majority of people will probably be reading Wikipedia mm -hmm. and click through and then you might want to say to them, well, have you, do you know that Wikisource exists? Perhaps you should go try that or whatever. Yeah, um, so the first one will kind of be figured out individually with the chapters about fundraising in different countries and we can have some time for that later. But for the second question, I think that's a great idea. Actually, even just talking to people the last few days, uh, we found more ideas for the contribution campaign. Um, and we did run a sister project's exist. Yeah, we did that for a little bit, but I think that's a good idea. Somebody had... Uh, um, from German uh, wiki, wiki source, I think wanted to have like a special, special message. And I said, yeah, that's great. You could probably actually write that better than I could, and please help. And he said, okay. So I think that it's a good idea. Um, we are currently focusing, um, when we are fundraising, we are focusing on the months of November and December. And we do so because this, these are the eight weeks in which most people uh, in the Western Hemisphere give money to us, uh, sure. for very good reasons we all know. Is there any thoughts and discussions within the foundation to localize this? For example, in Muslim countries, uh, as I understand it, the main month of giving is uh, the month of Ramadan, which we have right now. So it might be, it makes sense to target specific countries with a large Muslim community, uh, specifically in the month of Ramadan. And I'm pretty sure in other cultures there are other traditions of when people would like to give. Any thoughts about this? Yeah, I think that'd be part of us, you know, as we go, well, we're going to be optimizing and it makes complete sense to have the relevant messaging at the relevant time for different places. So, um, you know, it's, I think it'll come as we, as we grow and get stronger, but uh, it's definitely part of the localization for each country. Um, I'd like to ask, since I am from a country where online donations are not popular, in the 2000, in the la and I'm sorry for not being, I just arrived, but in last year's fundraiser, only about $9,000 were donated by Filipinos, which is not a lot of money compared to, let's say, all the other countries or chapters, so on and so forth. So I was wondering whether or not the donations models that will be coming from the foundation, whether this year or even in the years to come, will include, let's say, ways to accommodate more traditional fundraisers. Because like for us, we believe that in developing countries, more traditional fundraisers like bake sales, like um, voluntary donations, like door-to-door -door solicitations would probably be more successful than soliciting donations on the Wikimedia project. Right. I think that, I mean, that, that makes sense for the country, but for our site, people use the site and it makes sense to ask them for money while they're on it, using it. So that's why most of our fundraising efforts are on or the online campaign. Um, but I think that that's a, kind of a good point that you brought up, how that, uh, you know, a few thousand dollars came in from a country. So maybe it makes sense to turn over the banners and run the contribution banners there earlier. Um, and offline giving as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, one of the one of the things that we're experimenting with, and that um, Megan and her team are putting a lot of energy into, is other ways to give that are not dependent upon giving online. Um, you know, in some parts of the world, you give by going to a kiosk and purchasing a card, or or give by text message or something like that. And I know that they're investing a ton of uh, a ton of energy into figuring out how to. Um, how to how to do offline giving in in models that are different from from what we're used to here. Yep. 
Um, you mentioned right at the very end of the actual presentation about localizations. Um, I know in Australia, I mean, we had a very big donation from SLK just before um, the fundraiser started. So we actually had localized banners, I believe, in Australia about that. Is there any like information available about how, I assume Mouth wasn't the only one, is there any information about how those did? Ah, um, right, so last year chapters that processed payments, um, you know, had their own messaging no or they used translated messages from ours and I don't think that their testing was as, um, as extensive as ours was, um, but I know basically our, whatever message was working strongly for us is basically what worked for and the chapters as well. Um, but we didn't actually, from our side, we didn't have, we just didn't have the time, and this is one of the things we need to do this year, to actually do strong testing in different countries. Also, um, with, with Australia in particular in mind, one of the issues that we had was that the banners that ran in Australia um, didn't conform to a particular style that was necessary for our analytics to capture them. Um, there were UTM source codes and things missing, and so we were, because we didn't build the banners, the Australians did, and they, um, you know, we, we sent over information about how to do it somehow it got lost in translation and the UTM source and uh, UTM tracking codes weren't involved. So we just don't have analytics on things that were built out of that style. Um, and I think that um, Mr. Caldari put in some, uh, some uh, automation behind that this year. Yes, James is shaking his head yes, so I'm not off base. Um, <laughs> that there are ways to now, um, it should be captured by our analytics automatically. Sure. But in general, in general, we found that whatever messages were working, uh, for our, from our U.S. testing, worked for other countries as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So every year, I mean, sometimes there are some tensions between, uh, you know, our own community of editors who are not happy with uh, the huge banners, even if you can always remove them. Um, and I think at some point during the last fundraiser, uh, you just disabled uh, the banners for logged in users. So, do you think that? Uh, that will be more uh, systematic uh, during the next fundraisers? Yeah, and I think we'll probably do it earlier. I think we did it about halfway through the fundraiser last year, and we saw that when we took them down, it wasn't, uh, there wasn't a big dip in donations. People who are editing, if they're going to donate, probably already have. So I think we'll just watch it closer next year and probably be able to take them off earlier. It was one of the happiest days, one of the happiest emails we've ever sent. <laughs> Philippe, Philippe was most excited to, to write and send that email. <laughs> so I think that's probably all the time we yeah, have. Yeah, I think we're done. Um, and, one last. Uh, sure. Oh, sure, one more. Yep. Just one last question. Have you considered doing localization, a customization of messages based on the categories of articles people are reading? Yeah, I think that that would be another way to optimize this whole process as well. Um, in general, I think uh, it's good for us to find messages that are general enough and for to apply to all different people um, to get the most out of them. But yeah, that's another whole interesting testing area that would be just really, really fun actually to dive into and see what kind of messages appeal to what kind of readers, I think. But. Um, but yeah, we are talking about it and thinking about it, and um, and I think it'd be it'd be really fun. But we should also keep in mind, I think it's strong to kind of find messages that are general for a lot of people as well. Um, does anybody else have a question? So. Um, I think what we've decided to do is uh, find out if there are other questions specific to us, and if not, then we'll see if there are questions specific to um, the uh, the latest chapter's um, announcement, and then at that point we'll pass the pass the microphone. So, are there other questions about last year's fundraiser or what's coming up um, from Megan's side for this year? Uh, sounds like okay. We're giving poor Mordecai his work out. <laughs> Oh no, it's Brandon Harris. I'm not saying crap. <laughs> Are you mad about the Stephen Mulling test? <laughs> nah, it's not Brandon, it's me. Oh, okay. Um, so when you talk about, um, there, there was a little bit in the slide and you kind of skipped over it. Um, it said something about local payment options. Are you talking about things like bank transfers and whatnot in areas of the world where credit cards aren't really unpopular? Right, so that's uh, a couple of things. To be able to accept more currencies in different countries and different methods. So if cred online credit card donations don't exist in a country, maybe they use another tool. Um, so we want to do, we are researching right now and um, looking into how many we can add of those. Mm -hmm. Sweet. 
now I have the microphone. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Yes. Yes, Brandon. Um, yeah, Brandon has been on like Cloud Nine for the past few weeks because he was the first one of um, our new test to, to actually beat Jimmy, and um, and <laughs> thank you, Brandon. And um, if you haven't seen, I've been posting the the test updates on Meta on the 2011 Meta page. Um, so uh, if you want to keep following, you can watch them. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Oh, wait. Could talk more about events. <laughs> but if people have questions um, for related to fundraising, but not what these guys are working on, um, we left some time to, to talk about that. Um, we are breaking. 15 minutes, I think, um, and then there'll be a coffee break, and then it's the last session of the whole conference. So Jimmy's speech um, and the closing ceremony, um, and Terrell. Maybe you could use like three or five or whatever minutes to sum up the board resolution which you sent out to everyone here. Not everyone has been reading the hundred mails that were spiled up there, so. <laughs> no? <laughs> Don't you want to? Come on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know if um, if that would be helpful, um, or if this is relevant for everyone, or if people want me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> the board sent out, uh, wrote and approved a letter at our last meeting, which was just three days ago here um, at Wikimania, and sent it out um, it, to both Foundation L, our mailing list for the foundation, and internal L, the list for the chapters. Um, and it's also posted on Meta. And I can pull it up, I suppose. But um, it lays out um, that we see an issue with the current fundraising model, focusing very specifically on how chapters raise funds. Um, and we laid out. <laughs> we laid out five principles. Yeah, Stuart's here. Stuart should be doing this. We laid out five principles for future fundraising and um, talked about what we would like to see out of future fundraising. Specific to, this is not actually relevant to everyone here, right? Because this is a very focused issue for, um, like I said, how the chapters work with, work with payments. Yeah, so let me try and give a minute or two background. So the, the audit committee has been dealing with this issue for over a year now. And the issue really comes down to some pretty legal and regulatory factors. And more than anything else, it's that the, the foundation technically owns wikipedia.org. So one of the challenges is that we have a responsibility as, a, as an organization to kind of protect donors that come through wikipedia.org. And one of the things we've really struggled with with the, f the way fundraising has been done historically is there's not a whole lot of opportunity for us to do that. And in particular, what we've really struggled with has been transparency and basic information flow from some of the chapters that have participated in the fundraiser. And what we've struggled with is the reality that there hasn't been as much information flowing back from these chapters to the donors that contributed the money. Um, and in the end, you know, we, have, we all have a moral obligation to do the right thing with our donors' money. And the challenge has been that, you know, to date, we haven't been that focused on paperwork. We haven't been that focused on follow through. You know, up until a year ago, chapters agreements, some were signed, some weren't signed. Fundraising agreements, some were signed and some weren't. And the challenge is that as we've worked with our outside auditors, KPMG, which is a very big international firm, um, and then we even essentially got a second opinion from another firm, you know, they've raised and really pushed us on the challenge of how much transparency we're really providing to our donors and how much assurance we can give donors that their funds are being spent consistent with the messages that were used to raise them. And so I think at a high level, that's the challenge, which is how do we, 
how do we fulfill all of these sort of moral and legal and regulatory duties to respect our donors and respect their funds? And just looking at the last kind of six or nine months, we've actually tried a bunch of things over the last year. Right? The, found, the, the board put out a resolution last fall, last October, that outlined kind of at a high level that transparency and adherence to com, you know, contracts and agreements are kind of critical in our fundraising model. And the challenge we've had is that we just haven't seen enough transparency. We just haven't seen enough kind of fulfilling of the commitments that some chapters have made. And that's raised kind of a, a much bigger issue, which is what's the right way to grow a decentralized network? And you know, you look at the foundation, right? The foundation for its first three or four or five years was a bit of a mess, right? As all new organizations were. Uh, Wikimedia Deutschland its first couple of years was small and young and trying to figure things out. And for both of those organizations, what happened is we didn't have a lot of money. Right? I, I just saw Sebastian give a talk. You know, it was two or three years before Wikimedia Deutschland had more than a $100,000 budget. Um, the foundation, it was probably five or six years before the foundation had a million dollars in the bank. Um, and you know, one of the challenges with the fundraising model we put in place where certain chapters in countries that give a lot of money to Wikipedia, for example, like the UK, would receive very large sums of money very early in their organizational lives. And that's just not a very smart model, right? There's all sorts of accounting and financial control issues. But in the end, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. And so I think what, we've, what we tried to do in our letter was say the model that is in place now doesn't really work. And we laid out a whole bunch of reasons why it doesn't work. Um, and we don't know what the answer is, right? But we expanded on what those principles were that we covered last October. We expanded, hit, hit them again, and tried to add a little bit more detail so that we can all figure out together what the right model should be. And that's the trick, is right? we're all incredibly committed to building this decentralized movement with you know, hundreds of different organizations supporting this fabulous mission we have. Um, money's a tricky thing, so we have to find a way to do that in a way that isn't going to create all sorts of problems or set us up for failure. And that's what we want to figure out. And that's what we want to work together to figure out. So that's my long-winded intro. Okay. So that's the background to, that's the background to, as I said, this letter that the board wrote and sent out that you will see publicly um, and privately. And I, I think that many of the people here and elsewhere have been talking to many of you, but are there questions or talk, comments or or about other aspects of fundraising as well. It doesn't have to be just this. I want just to shortly address the question that Victor raised earlier. You asked, we sent out the message every year, if you don't donate, we will be closed down. So what do you think? If we don't get any money this year, how long can, we, can, can the foundation run? Six months, right? What do you guess? Six months. Yes, six months. So if we don't get money this year, in next year, sometime. But if we get, say, three million dollars, how long can we run? <laughs> you, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can. So we, we got last year twenty dollars. Twenty million dollars. Yes, you can. You and and we have six years of re, uh, six months of reserve, and you can you can you can compute it. You can calculate it yourself. How long that will will we, we run? I can calculate myself, and then as the second step, I can calculate that. But cutting global south and some other development programs, which are not extremely essential and I will get bigger like 10 years more? No, it is essential. That is the point. It is essential. And I will tell you why it is essential. Does your readers agree with wait, that? Wait, 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 wait. Excuse me? Do your readers agree that these programs are essential? I think so, yes. How do you know? Because the strategic plan was built by the community. Community of Wikipedia users, 
So, well, this is transparent. so this is part of why transparency is important. This is actually precisely why transparency is important. The reason that we all have to write our annual reports and publish them publicly and publish them on time and make sure that they're properly audited and make sure that we describe all our programs is to precisely answer this question because we want, we don't want our donors to give to Wikipedia, Wikimedia, any entity in Wikimedia um, and not know what we're doing, right? We want them to know with full assurance precisely what the Wikimedia Foundation is doing and give their money anyway. And if somebody comes to the, to the donation form and says, I don't actually want to give money to an organization that's working in India and working on the mobile website and doing these other things and maintaining MediaWiki, um, that's okay, they don't have to. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that, but they have to know one way or the other, and that's why we're pushing transparency and accountability. So actually, just to sum it up, because of that transparency, the donors do agree because they decided to donate when they saw what the plan was. Other questions? And of course also we're going to be available today and hanging out. Forever. Forever. And apparently there's also other ways to reach us after we've broken up here. I don't know how that works. It's like internet. I hope I'm not asking too many questions on the fundraiser, but I am hoping that, as I mentioned in my question to Megan earlier, I was hoping that the new fundraising models would consider ways for global for chapters which belong in the global south to be able to raise funds in parallel of the fundraiser so that at least we feel like we're contributing something you know during the time of the fundraiser i think that it's kind of unfair that the models that that the current model now kind of makes us feel that you know the chapters which are unable to participate in the chap in the fundraising process are relegated to a role where we're supposed to be the cheerleaders of the fundraiser but we don't necessarily, you know, we, can't, we feel that we can't contribute because we feel we can contribute something more. Okay, so the key word there is unfair. I think it's unfair that you feel that you have to re dedicate all your resources to becoming a fundraising chapter so that you'll have enough finances to do the things that really matter to our movement, like good initiatives, etc. I think it's unfair that just because people in some geographic location donate a lot of money and have the capacity to do so are automatically leading to chapters which have a lot of funds, which are probably doing great things, but also in some cases have way too many funds. I think it would be much better, and I think this is the first step in that, in a process where as you, as a chapter, or as any association or person, or anyone who has a really good plan, is able to find their way to finances to execute that plan, rather than spend a lot of energy on doing all kinds of other related stuff, which is really not related to the mission, but simply to the fact that we have to fundraise, otherwise we don't have any money. Uh, yeah, uh, I actually told a couple of you a few days ago, uh, and that was before the letter was sent out, uh, that I can speak well for myself, but also for Wikimedia Israel, that the technical level of, of payment processing gives us no satisfaction at all, and we don't want to fill out those reports that American law requires of you. We just want to be able to do what we want. So it's my personal op opinion now that I'd rather w w write a detailed work plan for the next year and have some kind of fair, fair process uh, for us to get the money required to fulfill this um, uh, plan than the mess technically with reports from PayPal uh, and burn out one of our board members every year. So, uh, and I, I'm, I'm rather, yeah, I don't know why chapters do, don't, do not all uh, agree with me. Some chapters have other, other opinions and that's, well, that's, they're entitled to them. So fully agreed. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, every chapter has its own priorities and other ways of doing things. And I think we sh we, we're much better than a one standard model. We should be finding a way to do a fair way to fund whenever we need to fund to further our goals. So I think we have five minutes before the break, so time for... Hello. My name's Roger Bamkin. I'm chair of the UK. And I thought it was very useful that you were talking about good planning, because I think it's very important. I'd like to challenge you on your communications, though. 
Um, this weekend, I should have directors employing the permanent staff, the chief executive we have to manage our people. I've got people negotiating with the top lawyers. I've got directors giving up their time to make sure that we get ourselves charitable status. We have spent time with you agreeing a fundraising agreement, making sure that that's in line with something that we can commit to, to make sure it's in line with our planning. And halfway through this plan, you've changed the goalposts. Yeah. And I feel that this is very bad communication on your part. Um, six weeks ago, I flew to Austria to discuss fundraising. We took one of our extra directors. We took days off to go and there. And there was no senior staff there from the foundation to discuss the fundraiser, which was what we'd flown all the way across, halfway across Europe to discuss. Thank you. Yeah, so I will. I, I I totally appreciate the frustration. And if I were in your shoes, I would share it. And let me tell you how we got here. Um, and I wrote this in a note, one of the many hundreds of notes in internal, right? Last October, we identified a set of issues. And from that resolution the board put out in early October, the staff went off and has tried to revise the fundraiser agreement, um, has tried to put in place a whole system of working more with chapters to assist them in compliance. There's colorful charts and reports and summaries all over Meta on this topic. Um, and what we had really hoped is that that would be enough. But, and I'll be incredibly respectful but fairly blunt, the past six months, what we needed to see what as auditors and financial control people who have legal liability around funds that flow through wikipedia.org, what we needed to see was a sizable improvement in compliance with commitments that had been made in prior agreements with schedules, and we didn't. And I think that's the challenge, is I was hoping that we could figure out ways to make all of this happen. But you know, we, we sit down in a meeting with our auditors and we show them this kind of chart that Mashira puts together that shows kind of who's met their deadline and when. And it becomes at some point irresponsible to provide more money to organizations which can't demonstrate an ability to meet basic contractual commitments. And I think that's the challenge. That's, and that's what's driving this timing, right? If, if three or four months ago, we only had two or three months of data, and it wasn't good, and I had hoped that we would be able to see more improvement, but I think that's the challenge, is we've got to develop these capabilities together. And until we develop them, we can't continue making the same mistake over and over again. But we want to develop them. That's what we're all here to do, is to develop these abilities. And, and we want to... And, how many, what meetings? How many meetings, have we had to this? How many meetings have you and the foundation had to discuss this? I don't know. You tell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I. And I, and, I, and I appreciate that. And like I said, I appreciate the frustration. And you know, I wish that our movement grew in very simple, linear ways, and that we, things happened very predictably, and they don't. Um, and that's the challenge, and the fun, and the frustration. And I'll take full responsibility for the timing on this, right? We, do I wish that I could have figured all this out, and the audit committee could have figured this out, and the board could have figured all this out earlier? Yes. But the reality is, We've got to deal with it, and we've got to deal with this situation, and that's what we're trying to do. I got, so, uh, it's like you turned off. Oh, that's okay. So, I just, one little nuance there. I, I, I do agree that the timing is awful, that it was very sudden, everything. But if you're seriously telling me that you had no clue that you were not in compliance with a lot of parts of the, of the agreement that we had that moment, and you were not reporting or whatever the issue was, 
Are you seriously telling me you, you were never called by the foundation or contacted to provide more information? I, I think uh, it's, 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 yeah. I, I have to say, just briefly, I think uh, one of the things that I think, I mean, obviously, I deal a lot with uh, all of you, and obviously, it's only a small part of my job. Um, and Mushira spends a huge amount of time dealing with you. It's supposed you to be all. a small part of your job. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Um, but I think the really important thing is, and this is where I think we're fundamentally off, is that all of this relationship points towards the foundation. You know, following up, asking, asking each and every chapter, every single chapter that, that did fundraising knew that in the agreement, April 1st was the date at which transfers should happen. One chapter submitted their funds before April 1st. Mashiri had to call every single chapter. That shouldn't be the way we run our, our movement. We all commit to do things and we do it on time. It shouldn't be that we wait till for somebody from the foundation to call and say, oh, by the way, have you done this? And then call again. And I think, you know, there's clearly everybody, there's volunteers, you were all volunteers and we we're all staff. And clearly we have to find ways that make it work. But at the same time, if we have a system where we're basing it on a staff member calling people to do transparency related things or to live up to contracts at, you know, we did it with 12 chapters this year. We have 35 chapters in the movement. We will have 50 chapters in the future. We will have problems everywhere because there'll never be enough staff, hopefully, because I wouldn't want to use our donor money for it, to follow up with every single chapter on every single issue. You know, so I think it is a question that we need to shift. We need to shift from this idea that there's a, a relationship between us, the foundation staff, who are asking for, for accountability or asking for transparency, to a relationship where, where we individually, as different members of the movement, are committed to that and committed to those goals, not because it says it in a contract, but because it's actually a core, core promise that we make to donors, and more importantly, more, more, uh, promise we make to the core community who've built, and many of you are that community, who've built and sustain and continue to grow with, with the Wikimedia movement. So I think that's the, that's the crux of it. I love the day when we do not have to employ people like Mashira. I mean, she's wonderful, but I'd rather her work on, right. I'd rather her work on building Arabic Wikipedia, which is where her passion is, than, than have another conversation about a, a report or do another table. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the tables, but there's a table on reports. It's largely empty. So she creates a table which is largely empty. So I mean, it's a really, it's a huge waste of resource and time and effort. And obviously, it's a lot of effort to do reports. But rather than say, you know, wait till a call, let's say, let's get a group of volunteers together and figure out a way to make reports easy, and then let's do them. So you I know, know we're at time. I'm around. I'm happy to talk about this more outside. I'm even happy to, to miss some of Jimmy to do it. I, I just wanted to say though, like. We're all here for the same purpose, right? We're all trying to make the sum of all knowledge freely available. We're all trying to do it in a decentralized way, right? But money is hard. And money, right? We raised $30 million as a movement last year. That's phenomenal. But $30 million comes with a lot of obligations and a lot of responsibility. And we're going to figure that out together over time. But please just remember, we're all here for the same purpose. And we're all trying to do the same thing. But we've got to learn to change the way we all work together because when it's just a bunch of volunteers, it's so much simpler. When it's a bunch of volunteers and $30 million, that comes with a lot of responsibility and obligations to our donors, and we're going to have to fulfill it. So let's figure out how together. Okay. Yeah. I would add to that, Stu, we are at time, but I would add to that, it's not just a bunch of volunteers. It's some of the most amazing volunteers I've ever met in my entire life. Like, we kick ass, man. We are so good. We are so good. We are so good. And what we need to do is to live up to that, right? Collectively, as a foundation and as a, as a group, so. So if we're gonna do that, then I have to say, I'm, <laughs> we also have an amazing staff. I'm serious, and I know Mushara having the thankless job of calling everybody, but people, all those people, the ones that specialize in, in you know, the small click-throughs and the banners and everything, their intention is not to have a job and hold a job. Their intention is they're working there because they have the same goals. Just because they're paid people doesn't make them non-volunteers because if I look at their hours and their response and the effort they're putting in, they have the same goal. So just not, just to, beside the volunteers, I think the staff are awesome too. And do take the time to find them if you haven't talked to them yet. Thank you very much, and we'll work through this in the next couple of weeks and months and probably years.